It's time for a Drummer Nation. help facilitate that and have an impact on your life so that you can play drums, that means the world to me. The former Crescent Vanguard series are now widely available as part of the legendary Sabian HH models. HH symbols are traditionally hand hammered into shape and sound by Sabian craftsmen. Find out more about the Vanguard series and all other Sabian models at Sabian.com. Sound Synergies Percussion Care Lubricants and Conditioners include a series of three products for total drum kit care and maintenance. Percussion Care products in your gig bag ensures your entire kit will always look and sound its best. Check out their website at Sound Synergies. I think I cut that spot off. Hey, we're live! Drummer Nation Live, Wednesdays at 1. Today's topic is Contrafact. We'll do a little uh, teaching of form and analysis very casually. But uh, joke of the day, a trivia question with a prize. Stick with us, a few more spots to show you. Hi, this is Stanton Moore. I've been playing and teaching drums for over 30 years. My new site, Stanton Moore Drum Academy, is the perfect online drum learning platform for any level drummer to learn how to play the drums the same way I did. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you as subscribers on the site, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Drummers seeking a quick and easy way to muffle bass drums on the fly, look no further. Muff Phone offers an effective way to instantly dial in your sound in just a few seconds while seated at the kit. Find out more at MuffBone.com. When seated at the drums, pressure on the tailbone, lower back, and hip joints can lead to pain. Only Carmichael drum thrones are scientifically designed to relieve and prevent discomforts associated with prolonged sitting. Carmichael Thrones, we got your back. Okay, we're live. Um, let me know if you're there. Give me a thumbs up or hello. Joe Tapia, I see you, buddy. Thanks for watching. I didn't have a lot going on for this show, but they're supposed to be short anyway, 15 to 20 minutes. So what I wanted to do was um, talk about a few things. I've been working as a leader lately, and I really dig that. My son plays guitar, many of you know, and I said, uh, he's a rock and roll guy. I said, Kevin, why don't you just learn some chord melody stuff and hit these coffee shops up and, uh, you know, restaurants for some background music. So he spent, I don't know, six weeks learning maybe 50 songs, and he's doing a nice job with them. And he started calling around, and he found a coffee shop here in Woodstock called the Copper Coin that had just been bought by a musician who made a career at Home Depot and uh, hired my son. And he said, well, I'm really interested in... in uh, in finding a trio. So my dad said, I mean, he said, well, you got to talk to my old man. So the guy's name is Randy Altman, and he's let me come in there a few times with a, with a trio, and I wanted to play something for that. Uh, I've been getting some of the best cats in town to hang with me and play, and it's it's been my honor to do so. So I'm going to play a little of that. And I thought, well, I can't just talk about playing myself and, and, and make a show out of that. So I thought, well, let's talk about a topic that relates to this. Uh, before I decided to play something for you, I realized that I would soon run afoul of the intellectual property police in that if we played a commonly known tune, it's the Wild West out there, but technically you're not supposed to spread that out there without somebody getting paid on it. And they can technically uh, pull it. And I just don't think it's the right thing to do. So I remembered back to the Beboppers. The Beboppers had come up in the 30s playing standards. Great American songbook stuff, Tin Pan, Tin Pan Alley tunes, popular songs of the day. And when they started playing bebop, they used as a, those songs as the vehicles for their explorations. They would soup up the chord changes, of course, but um, they ran into the same problem in that, hey, if we want to make play the changes to I Got Rhythm, we can't play I Got Rhythm, that's a George Gershwin tune. We can play it and they'll get paid, but why don't we just write another melody 
and put it over the same chord changes because when you copyright a song you copyright the melody and the lyrics the chord structure the underpinning of the whole song cannot be copyrighted otherwise one guy would own like almost every blues song in the world because they're on generally on a 12 bar blues format uh, standard format many alterations many changes to that to that but just as a rule that would cover thousands of songs so you can't copyright a song structure or a set of chord changes so the beboppers took advantage of that and they wrote new melodies charlie parker wrote ornithology over the song how high the moon uh... he wrote coco over cherokee other people too i'm referring to my notes uh... miles did donna lee to the tune indiana and then a lot of songs were done to i got rhythm so many that players just say rhythm changes and that means it's the form to I Got Rhythm. That would include Cottontail from Duke Ellington, Lester Young, Lester Leaps In. Well, there happens to be a name for that. So that, anyway, that way these guys could record all that stuff and get paid on it as the owner. So the, the name for that is, looking at some, some of the rest of my notes. I'm, the name for that, though, is Contrafact. Contrafact is a song written over the changes of another song so that it's an original piece of music. Why do I bring that in? Because I'm going to play for you an example of, I guess you could call it my trio, playing last weekend, but I'm not going to play the head. The head is the melody. That's the part of the song that's copyrighted. And once you get into the exposition of it, where usually you play, for you non-musicians, the song is a cycle of chords and melody, and it repeats. And you generally play the song once, that's called the head. Then you go through the song over and over again, and each time there are other things going on. Maybe each person solos through the song, or whatever, and then you wrap it up with the head again. So this is a tune called Janine, but I'm not going to let you hear the tune Janine. I'm going to start it right at the blowing, right at the end of the melody, and I'll stop it before we play the melody on the way out. That means it's whatever song we wanted to call it, and it's totally legit. But Janine was written by Duke Pearson. It's a very cool tune, and uh, I encourage you to check it out if you don't already know it. Okay, need a haircut. My guy's indisposed. Um, other things to talk about, though, too. Um, Joe Tapia, is there anything? I'm not sure what that means. Bill Martineau, thanks. Please chime in, guys. You can give me questions, uh, responses, whatever you want to do. I, I, I'm here for that. Um, cool. Um, so, as always, I have a trivia question, and I have uh, a prize for that, or a chance at a prize. The prize is very good. Let's talk about the trivia question. Whose drums are these? Whose drum set is that? Was that? Chime in with some answers. You're going to have a chance at the prize, whether you get it right or wrong. Why you're looking at that and thinking about it, I don't see any answers yet. What is the prize? Well, whether you get it right or wrong, I want you to go to the website drummernation.com and I want you to sign up for our mailing list. And anybody who does, plus all the people who are already on the mailing list, will be in the running for a prize, and I'm going to choose September 1st, I think, because it's such a good prize, to, I'll choose the winner then. The prize is... A year subscription to the Stanton Moore Drum Academy. Stanton Moore is my business partner and great buddy in that drum academy. You saw the spot we did earlier on it. It's very cool. I don't care what level you're at. He's got stuff for kids that are beginners and old, grizzled, veteran dogs like me. So um, that's a cool prize. And that's how you win. You have to go to the website, drummernation.com, and enter into... Uh, the list for my, my mailing list. And we won't spam you. It's just an e-list. We'll let's just let you know when things are happening. And everybody who enters, who, who signs up for the list, is automatically a subject for the prize. Um, and if you've already been on the list, you're still in the running. You'll be in the pool of names that are chosen from. I have some little spots that aim on me, and they've run out of juice. So my lighting is a little subpar today. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's what happens when I don't prepare as well as I should. Okay, so the question again was, whose drum set is that? Howdy, Tanya. Tanya's a dedicated viewer. She's always watching, and I sure appreciate it. Um, most people watch it in post, by the way, and that's fine. Uh, we do it live, but it's on post, and uh, you can get to it from the Drummer Nation website or the YouTube site or right here on Facebook. 
Um, anyway, I don't see any answers. Whose drum set is that? I'll come back to it at the end of the, the end of the show. All right, so then there's going to be a drummer joke. The drummer joke is the band is playing, and um, somebody comes up and says, how late does the band play? And the band says, about a half a beat behind the drummer. You could have a drummer that goes the other way and uh, is slowing down. Now, as a rule, you know, we're supposed to keep even time and, and not let it drift. Human beings will drift a little bit. As a rule, if it's going to go one way or another for a live performance, it's better if it gets a little faster than a little slower. A little faster builds excitement as it goes along. A little slower makes it feel like it's going to die. Do not say Michael Vosbine said it's okay to speed up. Because <laughs> it isn't. I'm just saying uh, the lesser of two evils is to get a little faster than a little slower. Okay, um, I don't have a lot of other things. I wanted to go over that topic. If you're a, a musician, you know that stuff. If Maybe you don't if you don't come from a jazz background. It's cool to know. I just learned that word recently, contrafact. Contrafact. I didn't, I didn't know what the, the official word for that was. Anyway, back to that idea. The song, you're going to notice this song is an AAB song, we call it, because it's got an A section that repeats, and then there's a different section. And then that's a cycle that goes over and over again. So you're going to hear it right after the beginning of the, the end of the melody and the beginning of the solo, and then there's a couple of choruses of guitar solo, and the bass player and I split a solo, I think, if we kept our form right. Then the guitar player plays back, and I'll, I'll, I'll end it before we get back to the head. So... Uh, if you don't mind indulging me, this is a gig at the Copper Coin in Woodstock. I'm playing there with the same band. This next, uh, the 22nd and the 29th, will have a different bass player. And uh, my son works there a bunch. There's a lot of cool things going on, so it's free. It's uh, no cover, no minimum, family-friendly coffee shop. Uh, stop by if you can. All right, Here, here's, here's the gig. Give me one second.
Starkey playing bass, venerable veteran bass player in Atlanta, and Dave Frackenpole on guitar. Many thanks to those guys. We did what you call head arrangements, where you can see I'm directing traffic. I didn't want to play a whole drum solo, a whole chorus of the solo in a little coffee house, and the Sunday mornings seemed to be getting loud, and I was barely touching it. So um, Neil played the second half of the chorus, and then we went back in the head, and I turned it off. So we don't want to follow the uh, intellectual property police, but the tune is Janine. Please check it out if you don't know it. It's um, Duke Pearson tune, uh, who was known to live in Atlanta. Um, what else? Oh, people are going to ask me about the gear, so let me go over that. That is a uh, Steve Maxwell drum set made by Greg Gaylord, custom kit along the lines of a Gretsch kit. It, it, uh, Greg works at Craviato, last I heard. Great, great construction, great drums. Uh, the symbols are Crescent, uh, Hamilton, Jeff Hamilton models, Hammer Tone series made by Sabian. Those are the ones from Sabian. They sound great. There's a Craviato snare in that. For you gearheads, that's what's there. And, um, oh, the answer to the trivia question. Andy Sebastia got it right. That's Stuart Copeland set with the police. Okay? Stuart Copeland with the police. That's his drum set. Remember, with you got it right or you got it wrong, you got to sign up for the e-list to be in the running for the prize. And the prize, I said, was a year, a full year subscription enrollment to Stanton Moore Drum Academy. All right. Uh, Andy got it right. Got some thumbs up, some people watching. I sure appreciate it. Sorry my light went out. Sorry I messed up a little bit of the sound, but I, I rarely get through these completely without a mistake somewhere. Coming soon, I just see in my notes. Coming soon, I have Eric Hargrove, the uh, probably the, one of the last hires from James Brown as a drummer in James Brown's band. Um, good friend of mine for a long time. Jim Payne, an educator you may know of, uh, and a fine player. And then Joe Corsello, I just interviewed last week, and Joe is uh, up in the New England area and uh, has played with a million people. Uh, I guess he's um, the Sonny Rollins drummer of record these days. I don't know how much Sonny is working, but it's a great interview with Joe. So I, I post those every two weeks. The one up there now is uh, Joe LaBarbera, and uh, we talk about some great old things there. Neil, bass player on this uh, gig I just showed you, worked with Joe in that band he mentions with Mangione. Anyway, I guess that's all I got. Uh, please check me every Wednesday at 1, and in archive you can see these, and then a new show every couple of weeks with a, a full-blown interview that's pre-recorded, and I will uh, let you know about those because you're going to sign up for my mailing list right now. All right, thanks a lot. We will see you on the flip side. Bye-bye. <laughs>